Shalom. I see you. And I think you hear me. Do you hear me? I think I hear you now. Shalom. Hello, do you hear me? You hear me? Do you hear me? Yeah, you should hear me now. And I hear you now. Okay, I have to. I have to uh, go to my voice meter, and then, uh, even though my microphone is on, I have to tap it to wake it up. <laughs> so I forgot to tap it. Now it's now it's awake. <laughs> How are you? What time is it there in Israel? Five fifteen in the afternoon. Okay, well, you've already had a full day, and I'm just getting started. I have had a pretty darn full day. I did uh, two big things today. Tell me, can you tell me about them? Or they I, uh, of course. <laughs> the first big thing that I did is I did a tour of my backyard. Okay. Did you did you find did you find Abraham or Isaac? You know, I really wasn't looking for them. If I would have found them, I'd have found them. <laughs> I was, I was looking, I was looking for something that unfortunately I did not find. What happened was, is that a good friend of mine, his name is Elon, who lives near Netanya, he came to visit, and he was very excited about the fact that I live in uh, Malay Hever, which overlooks the Hever Valley, and as he knows, and as I frequently tell people. In the Hever Valley was the um, headquarters of the Bar Kochba revolution, again, revolt, again, the Jewish revolt against the Romans about 1900 years ago, 1950 years ago, I believe. Very familiar with it. Yes. So he said, wow, I can't wait to come. I'd like to, I'd like to because he, he heard and he was right. He, he reminded me if he didn't... Uh, if he didn't tell me about it in the first place, that I didn't know until he told me, that the chief rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Shlomo Goren, we're talking about 50 years ago, he, um, probably closer to 60 or even 70 years ago, he told the, the prime minister of Israel, who was uh, Menachem Begin, he said, listen, we found some bones of the people who were the rebels, the Jewish uh, soldiers in that revolt. Now, Megan would like that. Exactly. And I was, and this rabbi, Rabbi, uh, rabbi uh, Shlomo Gorin, Rabbi Gorin, he was also the chief rabbi of the, of, the, of the IDF, of the Israel Defense Forces, of the Israeli Army. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar so, with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you're very familiar. I'm just telling you what our viewers at home. Well, I don't like you know, so I'm, I'm learning too. <laughs> anyway, so he said, I think that we should give these soldiers a full military funeral and burial. Wow. So Menachem Bacon it's an absolutely great idea. So <laughs> they ultimately had a... Had a um, a ceremony at, at the, the uh, Hever Valley where they were found. Now, now, don't think that they found these bones just scattered on the field and they just had to pick them up, like picking up gold, you know, or coins. As you may or may not know, the Hever Valley is a very deep valley, a deep ravine, like a canyon. It really is a canyon. I should call it the, the Hever Canyon. No, I, I'm not going to call it the Hever Canyon because... In parts of it, it's not so much of a canyon, but where this was, it was really a canyon. So to get into the cave where the canyon was, you had to go down with a repelling. It was crazy. I don't know how they did it back then. So they went in, they found that it was, it's a whole story. I'm not going to get into it now. But amongst the things that they found, and of course they found some very important things there, a, well, most things they found were the, were the bones of these, of these soldiers. So they did them a, a did a, uh, a ceremony, a full army ceremony at the site. 
they, they transported by military helicopter the remains of these soldiers to the, the, the uh, um, Jerusalem a military cemetery on Mount Herzl. And they gave them a full military cemetery on Mount Herzl. That's amazing. Anyway, the, all that's left over there is a, a, a sign, a plaque talking about this. So my friend Elon said, I really want to go and see that plaque. <clears throat> and I told him, I sure want to do as well. So he asked me a few months ago, a few weeks ago, see if you can find somebody who knows about uh, driving around over there. So I asked around and I didn't get uh, an answer that was uh, clear enough for me to continue to find it, et cetera. So bottom line is we went with very little pre preparation. So we ended up doing a, a Jeep tour of the area it was ex interesting, exciting. Also, the company was great. At least I enjoyed the company. And, uh, and we ended up coming back because he had to go back earlier than I, he got there late. He got here later than I thought he would. And he got, had to leave earlier than I thought he would, <laughs> which is all fine and dandy. We had a lovely three-hour tour, just like Gilligan's Island. And, uh, but we never made it to that sign. We made, it, we made it to other places instead. So he said, okay, I guess I'll have to come back another time. That's an amazing story. Thank you for sharing. That was a lot of fun. It was, it's an amazing story, a lot of fun. And of course, of course, I tell part of that story and, and, and different parts of that story when people come to visit me and I show them my beautiful backyard and I have other stories also like that. Anyway, that was the first thing I did. Now I just did something else that I'm very happy about. I prepared the local elections for my locality. Okay. I am I am the uh, chairman of the elections committee of my community. Oh, wow. You're a big, you're a big important man there. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think too many people care too much about it. They, they manage without me, they'll manage without me when I'm gone. Anyway. <laughs> Nobody else wanted the job. <laughs> <laughs> Said that I didn't. <laughs> that's, that's a wonderful, it's a wonderful responsibility. Really? Yes, yes. And, 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 I, and I really wanted to do this digitally because until, until I, uh, I took over this job, they were putting the things on a piece of paper. You came into the office, you wrote a little piece of paper, you in, and we were getting very, very, very low, low, low voter turnout. So last elections, I said, let's do it digitally. I was dreaming of doing digital elections for decades, not necessarily here, but in various places. And I'm also a, a politics and elections uh, um, uh, groupie. So I finally found this uh, website called electionbuddy.com. And I, and I just fell in love with it. And I ran elections with it about a year ago. And now it's time for another election. So I was a little bit rusty, but I got it all set up. And now we're all ready to uh, hold the elections. So I'm very excited. Well. Is it organized a way to organize your election process? Is that what it is? Exactly. And basically what it is, instead of going to the um, the office where there's a you know a whole piece of bunch of pieces of paper, you write down, you put it in a box or a shoe box. Instead of that, you on your cell phone and in your email, you get a link, you click the link, it goes to the site, your specific ballot you choose in this case the 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 election is is actually to um a to approve of how many of of eight new members to our community so it's mostly a rubber stamp but we have to do it anyway so um you, when you get that link you'll see these eight eight names actually you'll see three couples and two singles that's what you're going to see and so you just click Yes, 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 yes. Submit. And then they say, is this what you voted? Please re reconfirm. You click reconfirm. And you're done. And you can do it from the privacy of your own home and the comfort of your own home. So so what is the security that say that if this is the real person doing this and not somebody else doing it? How do you do that? Because I send it to, to his email. That's a good question, of course. I send it to his email and to his 
to his uh, um, watch my his phone, his SMS, and he's the, and that's the emails that we have for him or her, and they're the only ones who see it. We tell them, please don't share it, and it's good enough. And and we are the first people to do this. This they've had thousands and thousands of elections with this way. Sure makes it a lot easier and more convenient. Of course, of course. No, so that I just finished now. I'm quite excited about that. Very good. Very, very and uh, everything else is doing well. How are you doing, my good friend? Hey, we we just keep pressing on. <laughs> yeah, we were up. Uh, I was up in McKinney last weekend with our friends and doing the uh, air Shabbat service and yes. visiting with the students there and enjoying them. And that was. That was nice uh, to get to continue to do what God has called you to do is uh, is always a blessing, you know. <laughs> so we did yes. that and uh, finishing our 50s, our last nine podcasts that we're sending to the podcast company. So that's pretty busy and wow. and. Uh, Visiting with our, our mutual dear friend, Dr. John Gore, on uh, uh, developing courses for the new Hebraic Christian College. So, pretty busy. <laughs> the new? The new Hebraic Christian College? Yes. What's, what's wrong with the old one? Don't have an old one. <laughs> uh, how new is the new one? It's so new, the ink hasn't even dried yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh very busy with all of that and then peggy uh had uh cataract surgery last oh week for one eye and uh she goes back next week god willing to do the other eye oh my gosh so she's also continuing to have chiropractic treatment for her nerve pain spine issues so that's that's taking up all of our personal time. So we're, we're busy, you know, trying to coordinate our, our, our calling from the Lord versus our personal health issues, you know. Yes, yes, yes. So we're pretty busy. And we, we uh, I, uh, I write a lot of emails encouraging people. When you get a certain age, they think you're, you're, you're old and you might know something, you know. So you, you, try, to, you try to write encouraging encouraging letters to the younger people you know when you say letters i'm sure you mean emails emails of course yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> email you're talking about younger people so they don't know what a letter is no but uh one day i'm going to give seminars on how to use a yellow tablet <laughs> <laughs> A yellow tablet. I I prefer gold or silver as a background for my tablet. Or uh, you know, I take two tablets and I feel I call my doctor in the morning. I don't two know tablets. some of these things, but uh, anyway, we're very busy trying to uh, you know keep up with what God has given us to do and help help as many people as we can. And I I do need to point out. Uh, Peggy's eye surgery is next Tuesday, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'll have to pass for next Tuesday as well. Okay, so, let me let me quickly uh, let me quickly delete that over here. One second. Uh, next week is the, yeah. the second. Yes. Yes, November second. Something happened on November second. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, so she has to wear a patch over her eye at night. So she doesn't touch her eye accidentally, and yes. she has to lay the opposite direction of whichever eye she had the surgery on. So you have to be very you have to put drops, lots of drops in your eyes for about ten days or so. So you have to pay attention to what you're doing, you know. So she had the lens implants, which theoretically means she won't have to wear contacts anymore. So that's mm -hmm. good. Very good. Thank you. So then after she does mine, I have to do hers. I have to do mine. <laughs> you're you're going you're gonna to do cataract surgery? I got to have my cataracts removed too. 
Oh my! What yeah, do, you, where, do you have? Do you have that scheduled? We're 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 on the wait list. <laughs> oh, so yeah, it's it, it's uh it's several months wait list. So, uh, so we'll get this stuff tended to, and then we can refocus more fully and completely on what we really like to do, which is helping people. You know, Re refocus. Pardon the expression. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So, well, when I read my Bible, I, I have to use a flashlight to see the see the words better. So it's time it's time to get these fixed here. Wow! 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 Tough. Not, uh, Moses, his eyesight didn't grow dim, but I haven't caught up with him yet. <laughs> Tell me, how's your family doing? Thank you very much. My uh, my younger son and his wife and baby just moved from Tzfat. I believe I might have shared that with you in the past, that he was moving. And now he's moved. And so this past Sunday, today's Tuesday, so this past Sunday, a couple of days ago, he had a, uh, a housewarming party. Where does he live now? He lives in a uh, community not far from us called Otniel. It is uh, near Hebron also, and it is named after Othniel, the son of Othniel, I don't know how you pronounce it in English, the son of Kenaz or Kenaz or however you pronounce it. Okay. <laughs> wow. So you got him closer by now. You can, you can be a grandfather. That's right. He's, he's a 20 minute drive from here. Very good. Very good. So, uh, <clears throat> Are you getting any tourists yet in Israel? We keep reading all this stuff all the time. Um, you might know my friend David Haivri. No, you haven't heard of him. So he recently completed his tour guide course. Okay. And he, uh, he's very active on social media, on Twitter and Facebook. And he posted a lot about this first tour that he um, led a few weeks ago. So, how'd it go? Yeah, it went great, of course. <laughs> who, who, who were the who were the tourists? Do you know? Uh, ordinarily, I wouldn't have noticed, but I happened to meet up with him. They were a group. I don't know how many. They were probably a minibus, maybe about 20, 20 people, I guess. Um, from an organization called AFSI, which is A-F-S-I. It stands for Americans for a Safe Israel. Okay, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, right, right. So uh, this, this organization, AFSI, was run for many, many years by a woman by the name of um, K K Judy, no, Judy is his, uh, Helen Friedman, excuse me, Helen Friedman, Judy is her daughter, Judy Friedman. Um, so Helen Friedman recently passed away, and this other organization called uh, Women in Green, also the Sovereignty Movement, they have a few names, they decided to honor her memory, and with the organization, they raised money to put in a, uh, a memorial. Uh, park, playground or something, not, not really a playground, a playground for adults, basically a, a, an awning with, a, with chairs, I think, and uh, something very nice overlooking Gush Etzion, not far from Hebron also. So since... Yeah, I, 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 knew, I knew the man who started Americans for Safe Israel. He passed away some years back too. We, we were... I may have written an article for their publication. I don't remember. I had some kind of connection with them, but it's been a while now. So, do you remember his name? Next time, I might remember it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Let me let me try to let me do that myself. I I know his name, but I can't remember his name. I'm, I'm that's him. So embarrassing. Nah, nah, don't worry about it. Because I talked with him several times on the phone and. You know, I just I'm just drawing a blank right now. Herbert Zwiebon. Yeah, I guess so. Yes, right, 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 right. 
Yes. You might forget. I might never have known. But the <laughs> internet never forgets and knows everything. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's who it was. And uh yeah, so uh being a Zionist, of course, I from time to time made connection with various Jewish Zionist organizations in some way or another. You yes. know, we've done so Who's many things. We've done so many things. I, I don't remember all of it right now, but uh, we're 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 uh, uh, have the same goals. Time to favor Zion has come. Psalm one hundred two. Right. Yeah, I wrote a I wrote a booklet on that, and I, actually I gave a lecture on that. Uh, in Jerusalem for the ICEJ uh, Zionist Congress many years ago. And uh, some of the people got so excited about the lecture, they said, you should write that down. Well, that's that's not the thing to say to an author, you know. <laughs> as soon as you get back to the hotel room, you're going to start writing it down, you know. So I wrote about a 40, 50-page uh, booklet publication called The Time to Favor Zion Has Come. And it's 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 been used around the world by different groups, you know. So uh, this is what we believe that God is doing today: is calling the Jewish people back home to their ancient land to uh, make them the head and not the tail. Hallelujah! You I mean, that book, the time to favor Zion has come. Is the name of that booklet? Yes, it's from Psalm 102, of course. No, it's called, well, it's called The Time to Favor Zion. That's the name of it. It's got a purple yeah. color cover on it. And yeah, you're going to find it. And order several hundred copies today. If there are any to be had. Okay, we are. It's on Amazon. Uh, okay, well, I have it in my, my office, too. You can buy it from me, you know. <laughs> Let's see what we got over here. It's also on eBay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my, it's everywhere. Okay. Town favor Zion has come. That's it right there. Kindle has it for, you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> I don't know. Two, oh, $2.99. Well, it cost me more than that to print it. <laughs> oh, my. Just Kindle. It's not available here. Huh? It wasn't available as a paperback on, uh, oh, maybe it is. One second. No? Well, I have it as a, as a paperback at my office. <laughs> okay, but the question is, is it available uh, for, uh, for hard copy? or uh, it, it, It's not a hard copy. It's a paperback. Paperback, yeah. So if you go right, uh, let's see. Uh, hmm. You can get on ebook. Uh, you can get it on the uh, A. No, somebody, can't get it. somebody is selling this for ten dollars and eight cents. That's a ripoff. Buy it for me for seven dollars or whatever it is. <laughs> and and it, the item is lo no longer available at all. Even it's ended. They only have one copy. It's no longer available on eBay or what? Not a, no longer available. Tell me, do you have uh, a few copies of it? I have a few thousand copies. How many would you like? <laughs> no, I don't want a thousand. Oh, my gosh. How many of these books you got, man? Well, enough for people to read for a while. <laughs> I've been busy. I like this ancient Jewish prayers of the Messiah. I love that one. And how the cross became a sword is very important. I'm, I'm sure you like them all. It tells the history of uh, anti-Semitism in a short 50 or 60 page read that just highlights things because most Christians don't know this history. And it's very important. Uh, it's been shown on in South Korea, this, this book here. How the Cross Became a Sword. Very important publication. Very this important. Is book, this is the book that I, I'm reading. 
And I oh, like yeah. so much that I reached out to you for the No Longer Strangers book. Oh, you enjoy, are you? Do you like it? I hope. <laughs> I liked it very much. Obviously, and I didn't. Uh, you know, you're writing from your perspective, and I'm reading from my perspective. But there, I found a tremendous amount of of uh, overlap that I was very uh, happy to read, and I also found a lot of stuff that I did not know, and I was happy to read it in that. Uh, format and it was easier for me to understand well i'm very i'm very grateful thank you no, i'm grateful this, this christian uh christian go back up you're looking at all my books christian jews in israel this right here is, is very important that is very important i, I hope you, you can get a copy of that if you don't have one but it's so expensive to ship things overseas now you know <clears throat> but uh, that's that's very important, very important book. This is uh, this this cover. One uh, sec. Oh my gosh! I'm trying to see how many pages it has. It doesn't say. Yeah, here you go. This this cover. These these uh, banners were made by our friends Pete and Kay Williams. Yes, uh, and they. They pioneered uh, these high level, these are the 12 tribes of Israel, what these flags are, these banners are. Yes, and, yes, yes. And this, this particular, so they, put, they showed them at the feast all those years at, at the Binyan Nauma. And so this is taken in Houston. We had a- Really? Uh, huh? Yeah, we had a Celebrate Israel night we, we hosted at Beth Yeshurun with our dear friend, Rabbi David Rosen, that we love dearly. And so we had them, we had Pete and Kay bring the banners to Houston from West Virginia. It cost a thousand dollars just to ship the banners. <laughs> yeah. From where? West Virginia. A thousand dollars, you could have put them on a, on a U-Haul. They're works of art though. They're very, very important banners. So we had a processional, and you can see just the heads of the people turning around and looking a little bit. Uh, so this was, uh, we had about 900 people there, I guess, about uh, 500 Christians, four or 500 Jewish people. And uh, most of the Christians had never seen these banners because they'd never been to Houston before. They were in Jerusalem at the feast all these years. Uh -huh. and, and the Jewish people, had, of course, they'd never seen them at all. And this was a major event we had. We had the mayor of Houston there, the Jerusalem Orthodox mayor at that time, sent us a uh, Mazel Tov kind of uh, greeting. And uh, it was a big deal. Big, when did that when did that hat take place? Oh my goodness, what <laughs> uh it early two thousands, I'm not sure exactly the year, but uh when they when they and of course I'm calling out the names of the of the tribes and then they would start and come with their processional. Wow these, these banners weigh uh, thirty or 40 pounds so they're not wow. easy they're not easy to manipulate i've carried i carried judah one year in washington dc so these they're very hard to to handle but you so know what you know what benjamin you know what benjamin says about uh, judah what does he say he, he ain't heavy he's my brother okay <laughs> well when when the processional started, it, it was it was it was one of the most amazing events of me and Peggy's entire life. But when the professional processional started and people turned around like this to see, you could hear an audible gasp ripple throughout the whole sanctuary. They were so, oh, I'm I'm getting, I'm getting the anointing of the ruach here, my dear friend, yes, yes, <laughs> talking yes. about this stuff all over me it was so powerful the presence yeah. of god when that processional started it was just wow everybody was speechless wow and uh 
So then we ended with the tape of Pat Boone singing the Exodus song, you know, <laughs> it wasn't a dry eye in the entire building. And I was thinking, this is what Jews and Christians are supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be loving each other, you know, not fighting each other. That's right. <laughs> so wow. We had we had some wonderful meeting experiences like that, Peggy and I did, putting all of these events on and uh you know so um, we we have some people see things in a more clear way maybe it's just wonderful just wonderful yeah uh, it was it was amazing and uh so we're we're grateful for rabbi rosen for letting us have that at at his synagogue there and a, a lot of the uh influential people from both communities came and we had the Beth Yeshua and Children's Choir started out by singing Alleluia, you know, one of our Beautiful. favorite songs, the, the one that won the European contest, you know. Sure. <laughs> I, I remember that one. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Not that one. Hallelujah. Oh, I know, I know. No, it's second place, second place. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was uh it was an amazing night for everyone and uh so that that's that's the cover that's the that's the photo of that processional i put on the cover of that book very important book if you don't have it i hope i can get you one somehow you know it's very important <laughs> well look i'm certainly i'm certainly going to uh spend time in Houston. I just spent time yesterday with my good friend Galen Walters, who lives in the Houston area. I think Belleville? Is, could it be Belleville? Is that Belleville, familiar? Yeah, I yeah, know right where it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, west of, uh, of Houston. It, it's, it's outside of Houston a, a little bit, but not far away. You know, we, not far. We, we have a, let's see, now Peggy and I have been there many times because we have some students there. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. We had we had classes in that area some years back. And so people from Belleville and the other smaller, more rural communities came to the classes. So uh, <clears throat> he, did, does he come to see you sometime? On you on Zoom. Oh, on Zoom. Well, I can't send you the book on Zoom. I don't guess. I don't know. Yes, but um, but we had a lovely, lovely time, and I would love to spend some more time with him because he's got a ranch with a uh, a retreat center, and we talked. What's his name now? His name is Galen Walters. I, I probably know him, but I just can't. I can't make the connection right now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't run to say the word. Probably, it's a big country out there. And he shared with me that he is a member of a uh, a church that is a little out of the box. It's not your your average uh, uh, Southern Baptist. You it's know called, the name of it? Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, he called it the Oneness Church. Have you heard of that? No, I haven't. I'm... It's, it's a small church, only with three or four million adherents. Not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so obviously, you know, with millions of, of adherents, he's got thousands of, uh, of leaders. And, they, and he's a businessman himself. He's been in business for, for decades and decades. And he's also a very uh, uh, religious person or, or, or faithful, whatever you call it. And so he created, let's see if I can remember it. I had a time, hard time remembering it when I was talking to him. He created Kingdom Leader Lab. It's a, it's a nonprofit organization that he, has, that he has created to help leaders, pastors, whatever, of their, of their communities, of their congregations, their churches, through the, the problems that so many of them have and so few of them were prepared for when they studied for the, the pastorate. Oh, my goodness. So he brings, he brings about, I, would, I don't know, about a half a dozen or so, nine, ten pastors with their, with their wives. 
And he and his wife, together with his partner, who was the leader of, uh, of a big oneness church for many, 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 many years. And they hit it off together. And so they run these together. And they bring them to a, like, like a, a, a boutique hotel he's got in his backyard. You know, when I say backyard, I mean 100 square feet. When he says backyard, he means 100 acres, you know. <laughs> yes, we're, we're in Texas, you know. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I, I went to visit him once. Went to visit him once. And it's got like about 10 or so beautiful guest rooms and a few mini small conference rooms. So, and he brings these people over for four or five days and they work very hard and it's just amazing. And he says he's done dozens and dozens and dozens of these events, of these pr programs. And so all of these leaders are very, very happy for him. So I really want to come and be a, uh, a fly on the wall for one of them. Well, we're not uh, that far away. You have to come visit us here on the farm. Of course. Now, of course, I also want to uh, come and visit uh, um, uh, the Sarvatis, Paul and, and Victoria in, uh, in, in uh, Houston. And I probably have two or three other friends in Houston. So I'll probably come and spend a whole week in Houston the next time. Well, you can gather eggs from our farm the hens are just right out here on the other side of the house. <laughs> They're waiting for you. <laughs> Free range. Okay. <laughs> Free range hens waiting to give you their eggs. Just waiting. Tell, tell them not to hold their breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there when I'll get there. Now, listen, there's no question. There's no question that this uh, all this COVID stuff drove us a little bit kaplooey. And uh, now I'm so... Um, it's not easy for me to make a decision to, to fly uh, abroad because it's expensive. It takes a lot of time, a lot of preparation, to take time away from my house. And I miss a lot of important emails. On the other hand, um, had I still, had, had this uh, COVID not come around, that I pr might have st still been traveling to the United States once every 90 days. And after a... a, a, a a conversation like we're having right now and, and like I had with, with Gail yesterday with uh, just reminding me, oh, how much I'd like to come and visit. I would say, you know what? My next trip, I'm going to spend a whole week in Houston. And uh, well, I, I hope you will come by. And uh, we'll, now, of course, our offices are a little north of Houston in the Woodlands Conroe area, but it all, it all runs together on I-45. But we're about an hour and 15 minutes north of there. Uh, but I want you to come out here and spend the night or two with us. And I'll load you up with books you can take back home. And uh, you, can, you can take me home with you through the books. <laughs> when, I, when, I come to, when I come to Texas, I think you would like. When I come to Texas, I hire a driver. And uh, well, I in Dallas I drive around with Uber or some other thing I forget what it's called the other one, the uh, Lyft. But um, but when I when I go out dif distant to uh, to Midland or to uh, Austin or Houston, and I and I have to drive, then I uh, hire a driver from uh, Craigslist or something like that who has a car and he drives me the whole way and I'm on my phone the whole time. <laughs> do you go, do you go to Midland sometime? Yep. You know, you know, my friend, uh, Dick Salisbury over there. Dick Salisbury. Yeah, of course. Who else do you know in Midland? <laughs> we'll, turn off, we'll turn off the computer. We'll turn off the phone, the, the, the uh, video. And you'll give me all, a list of all your friends out there in, in uh, Midland and Odessa. You'll introduce me. Have, have you been on God's Learning Channel out there? You know, I went to God's Learning Channel with uh, my friend. You might know him also. Uh, Mendez. Uh, I forget. Yosef, Joseph Mendez. Is that his name? The Jerusalem violinist. You know him? Yeah. Yes, I know him. So we went out to... Uh, the God's Living Channel out there in Midland. But we caught them on an off day. We, I don't, we, didn't, have, we, we didn't have an appointment. 
But, you know, we were in the neighborhood. So we stopped by. And it was like in between, like somebody was, I understand that they're starting to, to, to broadcast more. They had been broadcasting less at that time a few years ago. Well, uh, I made almost 600 television programs there, get on. Woo! Yeah. You, so, broke the, you, broke the, you broke the camera so many yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Al and Tommy Cooper, very, very close friends. Al passed away a few years back, but Tommy's still going. And uh, we, were, we were, in fact, uh, they came on my tour to Israel once or twice. And, and I went on their tour once or twice right. as, their as their tour teacher. Right. Uh, but uh, we were very, very close to them for many, many years and, and still close to Tommy. So. so please so please do me a favor. Reach out to Tommy and tell her that I'd like to uh, have a, a Zoom meeting with her as well, if, that's a, if, that's a, if that she can, she can handle that. I'll be glad to pass that on. Thank you very much. This is my phone ringing. It's ringing. Can you can you hear what? This is well, a you, better, you better answer it before there's no more hope left. <laughs> this is a ringtone on my phone. Is I take for <laughs> yeah. Is that something? You hear something else? I'll tell you a true story. Uh, then we have to go probably, but. Uh, yeah. One of our students one time was uh, in hospice and in a, a coma, really, was right. near, near the end of her life. Yeah. So uh, Peg and I were there with her and some of their family members. And there was been, this is a true story. I don't know if God works in mysterious ways, you know, but uh, she had not responded to anybody. She just laying there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I had a phone call. Uh, this is a true story. I had a phone call and it started playing Hatikva. Her body leaped out of the bed when she heard it. Her spirit inside her heard that song and it brought life into her. And then she, when it was over, she slumped back down in the bed. This is a true story. Isn't that something? Wow. Amazing. I, that's what a way to end our, our Zoom meeting today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just know that we love you from Texas and you're always welcome. My regards and uh, wishes for complete health and recovery for Peggy. Thank you so and, much. And we will uh, take a break next week, but we'll be seeing you hopefully in two weeks. Let's see. One second. That should uh, be that's. It looks okay. Good. With God's help. Right. And that will be that will be after daylight savings ends here in Israel. Are you on daylight savings over there still? Or yet? Or I, I think we still are, but it changes soon. We'll figure it out. All right. We'll figure it out. All right, Lahitra Ot. Shalom to you. And I'm looking forward to, to talking to you about getting some of those books sold also. I gotta get them to you somehow. One way or another. All right.